my health corner believe it or not God really does care about your health last year just about anywhere you look sickness and disease were on the rise in the United States someone had a heart attack every 40 seconds 1.4 million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes every year and one in two people will get cancer in their lifetime it was estimated there would be 1.9 million new cancer cases diagnosed last year and 609,360 cancer deaths. Also, there's a rise in the number of strokes per year, gastrointestinal problems, arthritic conditions, lung conditions, lupus, multiple sclerosis, and a host of many other diseases. The question is, why? Well, many people believe God is to blame, but is this the case? In 3 John verse 2, the Bible says that God wants us to prosper and be in health. So if God wants us to prosper and be in health, then why is disease more rampant now than ever before? What's the problem? Well, there's laws known as natural laws. And when these laws are neglected in any way, the result is sickness and disease. And over a period of time of neglecting these natural laws, more severe diseases like cancer can set in, and sometimes even death. Now, over the last uh, quite a few videos, I've been covering the subject of nutrition. And that's a topic that takes quite a while to cover because there's a lot of aspects to uh, cover under that subject and the last time I started a four-part series on temperance So today is part two on temperance and the topic is coffee tea and caffeine So I just want to share some quotes with you before I get into today's topic The first one is um, from the Bible Psalms 103 verses 4 and 5 says who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things? And then 1 Corinthians 9.25 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. And temperance is one of the fruits of the Spirit, as mentioned in Galatians 5.22 and 23. Then over to the Spirit of Prophecy, we're told in Temperance, page 138, God's people are to learn the meaning of temperance in all things. They are to practice temperance in eating and drinking and dressing. Well, what is temperance? True temperance teaches us to dispense entirely with everything hurtful and to use judiciously that which is healthful. Touch not, taste not, handle not, tea, coffee. The only perfectly safe course to pursue is to stand firmly on the side of temperance and not venture in the path of danger. That's 3T488, paragraph 1. The Ministry of Healing, page 334, says the advocates of temperance reform should be awake to the evils resulting from the use of tea and coffee. And then Councils on Diet and Foods, page 421, paragraph 1, says tea is poisonous to the system. Christians should let it alone. And she's talking about caffeine tea, not herbal tea. Herbal teas are perfectly fine. But she's talking about green tea, black tea, those types of teas, the tea that comes from China. And then Temperance, page 158, says those who believe present truth should refuse to drink tea or coffee. Now, children should not be served tea or, tea or coffee either, we're told in 3T488. And we are to refuse it when it's offered. Councils on Health, page 463, says if tea is offered, let him refuse it. But why? Well, Councils on Diet and Foods, page 420 says, the stimulating diet and drink of this day are not conducive to the best state of health. 
tea, coffee, and tobacco are all stimulating and contain poisons. They are not only unnecessary but harmful and should be discarded if we would add to knowledge temperance. And then Councils on Health, page 463, paragraph 1 says, If tea is offered, let him refuse it, explaining that it is harmful, that though for a time stimulating, the stimulating effect passes off and a corresponding depression is left. Excuse me. Let him explain the injurious effect of intoxicating drinks and of tobacco, tea, and coffee on the digestive organs and the brain. Tea uh, has a high has an influence to excite the nerves, and coffee benumbs the brain. I'm reading now from Councils on Diet and Foods, page 424, paragraph 2. Both are highly injurious. Tea acts as a stimulant, and to a certain extent produces intoxication. The action of coffee and many other popular drinks is similar. Pause. Okay, popular drinks, we all know that there's many sodas that contain caffeine, those energy drinks, and um, what's the name of that place? Starbucks coffee and all that, all that kind of stuff. These are all popular drinks, and that's what um, we can put in that place there where it says, popular drinks is similar. Any of these popular drinks that are unhealthy and containing caffeine to give you a boost of energy, so to speak. The first effect is exhilarating, she says. The nerves of the stomach are excited. These convey irritation to the brain, and this in turn is aroused to impart increased action to the heart and short-lived energy to the entire system. Fatigue is forgotten. The strength seems to be increased. The intellect is aroused. The imagination becomes more vivid. Because of these results, many suppose that their tea or coffee is doing them great good. But this is a mistake. Tea and coffee do not nourish the system. Their effect is produced before there has been time for digestion and assimilation. And what seems to be strength is only nervous excitement. When the influence of the stimulant is gone, the unnatural force abates and the result is corresponding degree of languor and debility. And that's Councils on Diet and Foods, page 424, paragraph 2. Now, same book, page 423, says the continued use of these nerve irritants is followed by headache, wakefulness, palpitation of the heart, indigestion, trembling, and many other evils, for they wear away the life forces. Tired nerves need rest and quiet instead of stimulation and overwork. Now, tea and coffee are not as powerful as tobacco. Councils on Diet and Foods, page 426 says, tea and coffee as well as tobacco have an injurious effect upon the system. Tea is intoxicating, though less in degree, its effect is the same in character as that of spiritous liquors. Coffee has a greater tendency to becloud the intellect and benumb the energies. It is not so powerful as tobacco, but is similar in its effects. The argument brought against tobacco may also be urged against the use of tea and coffee. Tea and coffee are stimulants and they do contain poisons. Tea, coffee, and tobacco are all stimulated and contain poisons. That's from Councils on Diet and Foods, page 420, paragraph 2. And there's no nutritional value in tea or coffee. We're told in Education, page 204, tea and coffee fail of supplying proper nutriment. Tea and coffee drinking is a sin, an injurious indulgence which, like other evils, injures the soul. These darling idols create an excitement, a morbid action of the nervous system. Councils on Diet and Foods, page 425, also Temperance, page 80. Then Councils on Diet and Foods, page 62 says, Abstain from fleshly lusts, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, is the language of the Apostle Peter. Many regard this warning as applicable only to the licentious, but it has a broader meaning. It guards against every injurious gratification of appetite or passion. It is a most forcible warning against the use of such stimulants. 
and narcotics as tea and coffee, tobacco, alcohol, and morphine. These indulgences may well be classed among the lusts that exert a pernicious influence upon moral character. Why? Well, there's ill effects on the mind. Your brain activity is greatly lessened. Councils on Health, page 441. Your brain is benumbed, 4T365. Your brain is injured, CD402. Degeneration of the mind, Councils on Health, page 49. Depression, Councils on Health, page 463. Your intellect is beclouded, CD426. Mental power is ruined, CD421. There's also ill effects on your moral and spiritual. And that's in CD 402, says development of spiritual powers is hindered. It injures the soul, CD 425. Sense of sacred things is perverted, CD 428 to 429. The soul's finer sensibilities is benumbed, 3SG 116. The tongues are loosened, CD 423, and worship of God is hindered, CD 426. There's also ill effects on the body. Body organs are injured, CD 402, causes anemia, depression, counsels on health, 463. Digestive organs are injured, CH 463. Diseases of every kind produced, CD 421. Dizziness, temperance, page 81. Dys dyspepsia, CH 111 through 112. Headaches, ministry of healing, 326. Your heart action is increased and you get a rapid heart rate, ministry of healing, 326. Heart palpitations, ministry of healing, 326. Human system is excited and you get nervous, that's what it means, your nervousness, 2T65, the human system is injured, and that's uh, CD426, indigestion, MH326, irritability, temperance 81, the life forces are worn away, CD421 through 422, many illnesses, MH326, the nerves are shattered, CD 421 to 422. Nervousness, temperance 81. Numbness, temperance 81. Skin is sallow and lifeless in appearance, CH 111 through 112. It steals B vitamins from the body and the stomach nerves are excited, MH 326. Stomach is ruined, CD 411. The appetite for intoxicating liquor is fostered, 3T. 569. The appetite for stronger stimulants is fostered, CD 429 to 430. And the appetite for tobacco is fostered, 3T 569. And the feeling for drugs is needed, CH 261, trembling, MH 236, and unnatural appetite, 2SM 420. Wow, what a list, huh? Many, many things that these uh, coffee and tea and these terrible things do to us. So what can we do uh, for a substitute? Uh, well, in Council on Diet and Foods, page 431, it says neither tea nor coffee should be served. Caramel cereal, made as nicely as possible, should be served in the place of these health-destroying beverages. And then Ministry of Healing 321 says cereal coffee, you know, like Cafex, Pero, uh, Postem, Roma, Tachino. Now, many people have a cereal coffee for an evening meal before six o'clock at night. And it says in Ministry of Healing on page 321, cereal coffee are the foods best suited for the evening meal. Now, back to tea and coffee. How does a person give that up? Well, if you have the book called Natural Remedies Encyclopedia, um, it's in there. There's a lot of great ideas in there. And um, the, it, whether you have the fifth, sixth, or seventh edition, you can look it up and find out what page it's on. But there's a lot of excellent ideas in there. And But I'm going to give a remedy for it too later on in a little bit. So what do we say when we're, when we're and do when we're giving these things up? Well, in Temperance, page 104, it says, I have a message from the Lord for the tempted soul who's been under the control of Satan, but who is striving to break free. Go to the Lord for help. 
Go to those who you know love and fear God and say, take me under your care, for Satan tempts me fiercely. I have no power from the snare to go. Keep me with you every moment until I have more strength to resist temptation. Claim the promises found in Psalms 50, 15 and 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Jesus is our ever-present help in time and need, we're told in 5T, page 215. It also says, only call upon him in faith, and he has promised to hear and answer your petitions. So when Jesus promises something, he will do it. Now, what happens when a person gives up coffee and tea? Well, Ministry of Healing, page 335, says temperance reformers have a work to do in educating people in these lines. Teach them that health, character, and even life are endangered by the use of these stimulants, which excite the exhausted energies to unnatural spasmodic action. Temperance, page 119, says the tendency of tea, coffee, and similar drinks is in the same direction as that of alcoholic liquor and tobacco, and in some cases, the habit is as difficult to break as it is for the drunkard to give up intoxicants. Those who attempt to leave off these stimulants will for a time feel a loss and will suffer without them. But by persistence, they will overcome the craving and cease to feel the lack. Nature may require a little time to recover from the abuse she has suffered, but give her a chance and she will again rally and perform her work nobly and well. What a beautiful promise. Yes, you're going to suffer and you're going to feel a loss and you're going to go through some rough times, but you will overcome and recover from the abuse. Now, here's a natural remedy that you can use when you're trying to overcome coffee and tea. It's called a cold sheet wrap. And this is good for those who can't do a steam bath. What you do is you dip a queen size sheet in a bucket of cool water. Then you wrap the body completely in the sheet while you're in the nude. And then you wrap over that sheet a blanket and then lay down for 30 minutes and this will draw toxins out of the body. Now on Second Selected Messages, uh, page 302, it says, we can use tea and coffee as a medicine. Sister White says, I do not use tea, either green or black. Not a spoonful has passed my lips for many years, except when crossing the ocean and once since on this side. I took it as a medicine when I was sick and vomiting. In such circumstances, it may prove a present relief. I have not bought a penny's worth of tea for years. Knowing its influence, I would not dare to use it except in cases of severe vomiting when I take it as a medicine, but not as a beverage. I do not preach one thing and practice another. I do not present to my hearers rules of life for them to follow while I make an exception in my own case. I am not guilty of drinking any tea except red clover top tea. So you see, it's okay to use it as a one-time thing for a remedy, just like cayenne. Uh, I will probably do a talk on that in the future too, um, with spices. And when you're using cayenne, um, you can use it medicinally, but you don't want to use it on a regular basis. Maybe I did it on spices already, I can't remember now. But anyway, um, also Second Selected Messages, page 302 says, I have not normally drunk a cup of genuine coffee for 20 years, only as I stated during my sickness for a medicine. I drank a cup of coffee very strong with a raw egg broken into it. Doesn't sound very good, but probably worked. And then second selected messages continuing on, same uh, page, paragraph two says, tea used as a medicine, but not as a beverage. I do not use tea, either green or black, not a spoonful has passed my lips for many years, except when crossing the ocean. That's the one I just read a little bit ago. And so it does prove a, a relief for, the, for that short time right there. But that's it, then you don't go on drinking it. Now, um, we're also told that physicians should not prescribe it for the sick. Um, and this is from the Pioneer section. It's 1890JWBHY223, paragraph 4. And um, that says, is a man 
a tobacco user, a tea and coffee drinker, a meat eater taking his three meals, let him begin with tobacco and put that away. Then let him leave off the use of tea and coffee, eat less meat and make his third meal very light. He will find this a heavy tax upon his system. He may all the time feel worse, but what of it? There is a glorious victory ahead. Soon he can dispense with flesh meats altogether. His appetite will become natural and he can take simple, healthful food with a keen relish. Next, he leaves off the third meal. Now, back to the physician's quote. I realize I skipped it. It's Councils on Diet and Foods, page 260, excuse me, 294. says, physicians will not prescribe flesh, tea, or coffee for your patient. Now here's some more info on tea. Besides water, it is the most widely consumed, consumed beverage in the world. It excites, but it does not nourish the system. And that includes black tea, white tea, chai tea, and green tea. It is very addicting. It contains over 400 poisons. It originated in China as a medicinal drink. The scientific name is, I'll probably not say this correct, but it's Camellia Sinitis, sinuses, sinuses, S-I-N-E-N-S-I-S, -E -S -S. that's how it's spelled. Tea contains one to four percent caffeine. Tea drinking became popular in Britain in the 17th century. Now here's some information on coffee. Coffee cultivation first took place in Arabia. Coffee is somewhat acidic, the pH is 5.0 to 5.1. That is pretty acidic. The first evidence of coffee drinking appears in the middle of the 15th century. It is extremely high in caffeine, has a very negative effect on the nervous system because it excites, it excites the system, but it does not nourish it. And it is very, very addictive. And um, there's going to be a link below that you can go and read more about the hazards and dangers uh, of this stuff. Now, also again, I talked about the temperance pledge last week. You can sign the pledge to abstain from coffee and tea. Um, like I said, all tea, but not herbal tea. Herbal tea is very good for us. So we hope to carry out our brethren and sisters up to a still higher standard to sign the pledge to abstain from Java coffee and the herb that comes from China. We see that there are some who need to take this step and reform. And that quotes from Temperance, page 82. So again, I will put the Temperance Pledge below and um, the link that I just talked about. Well, that's our time for today. I hope that what you've heard on here will be a blessing to you and to your family. And until we meet again, may the good Lord bless and keep you. And remember, God loves you and he wants you to be in health. So drink that, which is good.